Hello everybody, today I'm here to do the books and makeup tag and it's very hard to look at the camera right now because I have a monitor right here and a mirror right here and I feel like I'm looking at myself constantly. I should. <laughs> so the books and makeup tag has been around for a while. I think I've done it a couple times. The first time I did it I did not show how I did my makeup. The second time I did it, did I do it decently? I don't remember but I'm like hey let's not, let's do it today because I'm having a rough, I'm having a rough time. <laughs> <laughs> um, with things in life and all that stuff. I hope this is a decent angle. I hope that the focus is okay. The lighting's okay. I'll try to fix it throughout, but we're just gonna roll with it. I'll leave all the questions down below as well as the original tag video as well as my old videos um, that I've done. So let's do it. I might try to zoom you in and out. We'll just have to see. The first um, question or product I shall say is primer. Pick a book that left a lasting impression. I use the Maybelline Master Prime. Um, this is the Hydrate and Smooth one. It works fine, I think. Um, I don't use a ton. If you'll see, a lot of my stuff is drugstore. And I'm okay with that. Um, as far as a book that left a lasting impression on me, I'm going to keep looking at my shelves. Um, Gail by Kristen Hanna was a big one. I still think about that a lot. Any Taylor Jacobs Reid book really left a lasting impression on me. Um, Bear Town by Frederick Bachman left a huge impression on me. Oh, primer as well for eyes. I do prime my eyes as well because I do feel like it makes my... Um, eye makeup stay on. I just use an e.l.f. one. I'm a cheap girl, in case you haven't learned. I'm gonna have to keep looking at myself at different areas. But either way, those are the books that I think left a lasting impression on me. It says foundation, but honestly, that's not how I do my makeup. I do my eye makeup first, so I'm gonna skip down to the eye makeup question. And for, oh, first of all, it's eyebrows. I don't, I ran out of my eyebrow product a couple days ago, so I don't have to do that today, <laughs> but I'll answer the question. And that is a book that you think everyone should read. Um, the Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. Oh my gosh, I'm still gonna say that. Another one that I think everyone should read that I just loved a ton, Salt Kill Girls by Claire Legrand. I love that book. The Way Home, The Way Home gets shorter and shorter, The Way Home gets longer and longer. It's a short story by Frederick Bachman that I really loved. It stayed with me and I think everyone should read it. It's very impactful. Um, so those I guess you would say. Um, eyeshadow. Pick a book that has your favorite colors on the cover. Oh crap, I'm just gonna have to look um, at the thing here. So the palette I use 99% of the time is Makeup Revolutions, the Emily edit. Emily um, Noel is a YouTuber, a beauty YouTuber that I watch um, pretty frequently. I have other eye palettes, but this one I think is great, and I've had it for probably like a year now, and you can see how much I have used it. <laughs> I like this palette because it has not only neutrals, but it has purples and it has other colors as well. It's all encompassing. For me, time is my big thing. Um, as you all know, I'm a mom, and it's tough to find time to do makeup, much less anything, and just even to breathe sometimes with a kid, especially with a kid like mine. So I try to find things that I could just do all in one. So this is one. I'm going to do my purple look that I do. And I, I learned all of my looks from her from doing the tutorial, so I'll link them down below. Um, The book that has the most colors that I like. Um, I'm looking right now at Firefly Lane by Kristen Hanna. That has a lot of really pretty colors I like. I like a lot of like um, teal kind of stuff. Out of Love by Katie Katugno. I love that color on the cover. That is beautiful. If you, I'm gonna have a lot of excess right here, but I just clean that up, which is why I do my eye makeup before I do my foundation. I'm gonna try, this is probably gonna look like a hot mess when I am done, but oh well, I'm probably gonna fast forward a lot, so just get ready for that. Well, something else. So like I said, things are rough for me. I'm going to use this as an outlet. Um, I'm sure I talk about it a lot and I'm really sorry I do, but it's just my life. Um, my son is autistic and he just started school for the first time and it has been a really, really rough transition. <laughs> like I did not, for some reason, think it was going to be this rough, but it has, whew, it's, I know it's hard for him. It is hard for me. I have never felt this way before. I'm trying not to cry right now because I'm just, I cry constantly. That's a fact you need to know about me. I just cry at the drop of a hat. I hate that. Either way, um, he is, I think he's doing okay. I mean, he's, I love him a ton. He's a hard, he's, it's a tough kid. It's a tough time 
transitioning for him and it's a tough time putting all these expectations for him he cries every day that he has to go to school and upsets me because I'm his mom and I know he cries like the last bit that he's at school that his teacher tells me and I just I'm so conflicted of feeling like he deserves to be there and he should be there but also I feel bad for his teachers that they have to deal with that and I just I don't it's just it's hard for me if I'm honest with you it's putting me into some depression right now <laughs> because it's just a big change I'm trying to work with him at home and every night he gets upset because he has to go to school the next day and I know you're probably gonna be like homeschool him and I'm like yeah that's that's great but he he truly needs to be in school that's what best for him he needs socialization he can't just be home all the time I do work with him a lot at home but he has really horrible focus skills he has really horrible sitting down I mean it's just stuff autistic stuff so it's been really hard and it's only like the second week as of filming this but I just I hope and I pray that it's gonna get easier and he's gonna love it and I just hope so that I'm making the right decision that he's in school I also hope that they're not gonna like kick him out or anything like that I because I don't know what I'm gonna do if that happens but just pray for my family it's really hard and it's wearing down on me a lot like it's affecting me a lot it's affecting my mood I'm like I said I'm I'm spot I'm depressed I'm just gonna say that I said I was going into it but I'm definitely I'm definitely there like I cry every day I'm unhappy and I know it's just an adjustment period for him and me and I'm such like a protective mom it's just it's tough for me <laughs> that's why I'm not reading as much as well because I can't even think about reading I'm just that kind of sad every time I think about reading I'm just like oh I'm just this is just a big thing to go through so I don't know I hope that it gets better. I hope that he can get more therapies that he deserves because we're also dealing with that with these therapies but our insurance not covering and Medicaid and it's just I feel like I'm in and I'm sure a lot of special needs moms can understand what I'm about to say. I feel like I'm in this bubble of autism and I just feel like it's consuming my life so I don't know. I probably need to like myself go to therapy but I don't, I, uh, I don't know either way. Sorry about all that. That was just a nice big vent session for me, so I apologize. I'm just, you know, just try to pray if you're in, if you're into praying or think about my family, and just hope that things get easier and smoother and that it becomes better. And I just, I don't know. I think I'm just worried ultimately that the school's just gonna say they can't do anything for him, and then I don't know what we're gonna do for that regard because we move specifically so we can go to a better school district. So. I, I just, just, any special needs moms out there that have any sort of tips and tricks or anything out there, please share with me. I will try not to talk about this much anymore, but it's just, it's wearing on me and my soul a lot, so forgive me. Um, so that is my completed eye makeup look, so it's purpley. I hope you can see. My lighting is horrible. I apologize for that. I thought it was going to be decent in here, but oh well. Um, so what I do now is I just get a little cotton pad with um, some micellar water, and I just clean up the edges a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to assume that the eyeliner question is next. Yeah. Yes, pick a dark and mysterious book. Oh, perfect. Perfect time to talk about this because it is fall. I'll try to up my, you know, mood now a little bit. Um, The Devouring Gray by Kristen Lynn Herman. I really enjoyed. I'm going to have to, like, be out of frame for this one probably. I think it looks decent. We're just going to roll with it. So that's how it looks in case you're wondering. Um, I use the L'Oreal Super Slim. L'Oreal has my favorite um, liquid eyeliners. Mascara. Pick a long book. Oh, my gosh. Um... Any of the Throne of Glass books are super long as well. Oh, this is the L'Oreal Voluminous Lashes. I do like L'Oreal a whole lot for other eye products. Um, anyway, the Throne of Glasses books are very long. Also, Marissa Meyer books are very long, especially her um, um, Renegade series. Holy crap. Those are like... The second one, I remember, it was like over 500 pages, and I was like, this is way too long for this book. Um, so I would say, like, a lot of why fantasies are very, very long. Sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes I think it's a little bit too much. They're too long, in my opinion. After that, we have blush and stuff, so I'm going to pop on back 
to the foundation question, which is pick a favorite first book in a series. Okay, for foundation, currently I'm using the Milani per, um, Conceal and Perfect 2 in 1 and 00 Light Natural. It is a little bit heavy for me. I tend not to enjoy heavy foundations. So I do do, I think I do a pump of this and then I do like a half a pump of this Neutrogena Healthy Skin Anti Aging Perfector. It's like a CC cream. I think that bounces out and makes it a little bit lighter, in my opinion. I could be wrong. But um, what was the question? Pick your favorite first book in a series. For right now, I'm going to say, I just mix them in my, on my hand. Nothing fancy. Um, everyone does concealer and foundation differently. This is how I do it. So, and that's it. We're done. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I'm going to say right now, carry on. Um, because I just, I read that this year. Was it this year? Yes. Um, and I really enjoyed it. And I am really anticipating Wayward Sun coming out at the end of this month. I cannot wait for that. So I'm going to have to say also A Court of Thorns and Roses. I know. Unpopular opinion here. People, like, do not like Sarah J. Mass books anymore. But I really like that series. I don't like the third book, but the first two I really enjoyed. So those are my answers. And now we're going to do the montage music. Okay, that was foundation. Concealer. Pick a favorite character you pick a character you wish you can get rid of. Oh my goodness. Where do I begin? There's lots of ones. I have this Maybelline. No, it's L'Oreal. Infallible Glow. <laughs> I don't know. I just get what I get, guys. Drugstore is my friend because your girl ain't got a lot of money and it's just cheap anyway. Um, I got a lot of blanches. Probably due to stress. <laughs> Let's see. What is a character I could get rid of that I just really did not like? I mean, honestly, any every character in Dark Dark Wood by Ruth Ware, I remember. I think I'm thinking of a lot of thriller books right now because fall. And that's one of my least favorite thriller books of all time. Everybody in that book was just horrendous. So that, any character from that book probably. Next up we have Powder. Pick your favorite last book in the series. I, I don't use Powder. <laughs> I know that's probably not good. I don't set it a lot. Um, but oh well. Last book in the series that I loved. Ooh, that's a good question. Because I feel like last books in the series have not been some of my favorites. Um, I did really like Our Dark Duet by Victoria Schwab. Um, that was her last book in her This Savage Song or Monsters of Verity series. And I really enjoyed that one. So I'm going to have to say that one. Like that was my favorite out of the whole duology. So picking that one. There's no bronzer. So I'm just going to do bronzer real quick. My favorite bronzer is Butter Bronzer. I should probably get a new one because... Mm, it smells like the beach, like coconut goodness, and it's going out out of season. But I'm gonna use it till it's done because I bought that thing. I'm not, I don't contour. I really don't. I just kind of just bring a little color to the face. I just do my edges. Maybe if I'm feeling fancy, I'll do like my nose like that. I am not a makeup guru at all. If you can't tell, I'm just. It's not me. Um, I just know what I like, and that's what I do. <laughs> You probably can't even tell I'm wearing anything. Oh well. There's that. Blush is the next question. That, that is pick a book that has some cringe-worthy romance. Oh boy. This should be interesting. The blush I use is Maybelline's blush in the color Rose. I'm probably going to get a darker one for the fall. Um, cringe-worthy romance. I'm trying to think of a cringe-worthy romance I've just read. The Romance in Twice in a Blue Moon, which I just read by Christina Lauren, which is their new book coming out in a couple months. I, did, I don't think it was a cringe-worthy romance, but I just, I did not love the romance as much as I usually do in their books. I just didn't. Um, and I was kind of let down by the book, if I'm honest with you, which I was surprised by because I love their books. You guys know that. So it wasn't a cringe-worthy romance. It just wasn't one I really loved and connected with. Next up we have highlighter. Pick a book that brightened your day. For this one I do have a pretty expensive product because I got sent to it by the company and it's the Mary Luminizer from The Balm. I love The Balm. Um, what was the question? Pick a book that brightened my day. The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. I talk about that a ton but I really love that book. Also Things You Save in the Fire by Kat. Well I'm doing a little bit too heavy right there. Things You Save in the Fire by Catherine Center was also a really good one that I loved. So for highlighter, I just put it right here at the top. I put it at the nose sometimes, not too much because I think it gets a little overbearing. I put it right here 
I'm gonna keep it bow. Boom. You probably can't tell. The lighting is horrible in this video, but what can you do? Oh, contour was in the questions. They put that last. I don't know why. But the contour question was, what book surprised with how much depth it had? Um, Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I don't know why I was surprised by the depth of it, because Taylor Jenkins Reid has gotten really, you know, in-depth with her books, but I thought it was just gonna be a fun 60s rock band type of book, but no. It was a lot more in-depth, a lot more learning about characters, learning about the 60s and it was a lot like I said more in-depth so that one definitely surprised me with how like kind of deep it got. And our last question is lipstick your favorite book kiss. Oh boy that's I can't, that's a hard question to answer because there's so many book kisses that I love. Oh for lipstick I'm just gonna be using one of my favorites that I wear 99% of the time. It's from Wet n Wild and it's their liquid catsuit matte lipstick in the color Pink really hard. She's like kind of a matte pink. Nothing fancy because I'm not fancy. Um, book kiss that I really loved. Um, Red, white, and royal blue. That was a great first book kiss. Oh my gosh. Um, Fix Her Up by Tessa Bailey. That was a great first book kiss. Like that, wow. Um, so those two I guess would be my favorite. So let me apply this real quick and not talk. And there you have it. That is the completed makeup look. I hope this video is okay and that you got to see a little bit of my makeup process, but this is how it looks. As you can tell, I don't think it's too much. Um, I would, if I'm going out, put a kind of matte spray on it and just kind of hold it all together. But I'd like to call this kind of like put together but still casual i i'm not sure I, I hope you enjoyed it and i hope this tag video was okay i feel like i'm just not built to make these type of tags like with it's two things at one i just my mind's just like what do i do <laughs> but either way i hope you enjoyed it the rambling rant and stuff in it i'm just going through a lot right now so just bear with me thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye sing